The Augmentative Communication Program focuses on meeting the needs of people who have complex communication needs, many of whom are unable to speak because of um, congenital issues, sometimes um, developmental disabilities, sometimes uh, degenerative conditions. And so our program focuses on providing both assessment and intervention to help people develop more effective ways of communicating using um, augmentative communication tools and strategies. I've known Rick now since 1986, and when I had first started working with him, he was actually an undergraduate over Boston University. And so um, he was, at that time, trying to learn how to use, um, or we were trying to identify a system that he could use to be more independent, not only for speech and communication, but for writing, for participation in his academics, et cetera. The best way Rick can access that technology is using a switch at the side of his head. So the system, the software actually scans through. It scans through the alphabet. It scans through numbers. It scans through word lists. Um, it scans through pre-stored phrases and sentences. And he is able to use that to either open something that he has written in advance and speak it out, which is often the most efficient, especially if you're giving a presentation, or to, in um, a, a slower manner, um, be able to kind of generate a totally unique message. What would you like people to know about children's and John's work helping you communicate over the years? Mm. Without children's and people, like John, people would see me and other people, like myself, as not intelligent. Eye tracking technology is something that has brought a lot of excitement in the past um, couple of years to the field of augmentative communication. Lights that are emitted from the technology that are reflecting off of an individual's uh, retina. And some technologies look at just one eye, others look at both eyes at the same time. And the person is then able to kind of control the mouse movement on the computer screen. And through controlling the mouse movement, and then using other strategies like perhaps dwell time or another switch, someone's able to make selections and really have control of the computer using eye, eye track technology. What's the bunny's name? Cloud. Cloud is the bunny's name? That's a good name. When I had first met Brian, uh, he was in the hospital. He had recently transferred care to Children's and his mom had told me that she had done that in part because she felt as though there were so many parts of what was happening to Brian that had not been communicated to her or that she hadn't anticipated or that she didn't understand and Brian didn't understand. And one of them that she said to me was um, his losing his ability to speak. I already know what the end result is, but to feel like I'm being stripped of that early by taking his language away is heart-wrenching. When we got to know Brian, we tried to use every possible opportunity that we had, despite the fact that he had, in fact, lost so many skills to um, support his ability to communicate. One of the things that they had was um, singing. And there was one song in particular I remember, You Are My Sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. What we had done is we had taken a simple voice output communication aid <clears throat> that would allow for kind of extended recording but also not require a lot of work to access it. It was just one switch basically. You know he struggled through it a little bit because he was in fact losing his ability to speak but it was clearly Brian. 
it was his voice, it was his, his kind of passion coming through. So there are simple tools like definitely picture communication boards that were um, designed to kind of get to the heart of what was most important to Brian, whether it was positioning or his physical status, his needs, his comfort, um, or his, um, his social connectedness. I think that one of the things that is, um, is pretty amazing about this path with Brian has been that he will lose his ability to do something like speak and you'll say, you'll think okay we really have reached it this time you know it's really going to be hard for him to use speech but even though right now he is having a hard time using any speech his path is far from over so uh, it uh, who knows what he, he's going to be doing next week I think one of the greatest challenges is that um, so many people assume that when a person can't speak or can't speak clearly, that that's a reflection of their, their intellect, their skill. And so there are so many people who simply can't communicate, um, but they are, they are thinking and dreaming and scheming and doing kind of anything and everything uh, in their mind that, that everyone else is doing, but it's assumed that they're not intelligent because they can't speak.